in this module, we're going to go over some of the, the main internal and external components um, of small gas engines. Um, I say components purposefully, not necessarily internal and external parts, because some of the, the things we're going to talk about aren't necessarily parts, but maybe the workings together of, of a few parts. Um, additionally, for those of you in my class at LSU, one of your first assignments um, is going to be building the social media profile of a particular small engine part that I've assigned you. So we're just kind of going to talk about some of the, the big ideas today regarding internal and external components. So our two objectives then are to identify internal components of small gas engines and external components of small gas engines. And again, we're not going through all the parts in detail just yet, but these will be enough of the components and some parts um, to let us get into our discussion of, of four cycle theory and, and the theory of operation um, in our next module. So let's begin by looking at a graphic and I can I realize it's a little bit pixelated a little blurry but I think we can get the, the main idea of what's going on here. Um, so to begin um, to introduce a, a little bit of a term we're going to start by calling this um, an, an overhead valve configuration um, and in a little bit we'll talk about an L or a flathead but this is an overhead valve situation because the valves here and here are situated over the combustion chamber. So once we know we're, we're looking at um, an overhead valve situation, we'll talk about some of the labels that I already have here. So let's um, start by drawing a line here and talk about the cylinder head. So this is the head. This is a separate piece that we can actually take off of the rest of the engine. And so in the cylinder head, you're going to have, um, they're not labeled here, but the valves, the spark plug, uh, and the other valve. And and a good, another good reason to talk about this being the components of the engine versus parts is it's really important to understand what this is. This is the combustion chamber. This is where the air fuel mixture, the gasoline mixed with, with atmospheric air, is actually going to be um, burned by the spark plug. So this combustion chamber is very important um, and a very important piece of the engine that is, uh, is not necessarily a part but a component that we need to talk about. Um, let's see what else we have going on here is this entire um, gray uh, looks like a square here but it's really a, a cylinder um, <clears throat> is the piston itself and on the piston you've got three rings and it looks like more than here but that's just the way the, the graphic looks I guess this is actually a ring this is a ring and this is a ring um, that are going to uh, help make a seal between the piston and the cylinder wall so that we don't have the oil that's going to be way down here get up into our combustion chamber. And this uh, vacuum of space here is called the cylinder. And once again, the cylinder is, is nothing more than an absence of metal in the engine block. So it can't really be called a part, um, it's the cylinder bore. And this piston is going to travel up and down in that cylinder um, when the engine is running. And we'll get into that in just a little bit. So to add a little bit of clarity, what we just looked at, the combustion chamber is that area that is formed by the cylinder where the air fuel mix ignites. Again, the cylinder was a hollow tube that houses the piston, and the head or the cylinder head is that is that one piece block that actually bolts to the top of the cylinder that where I drew that line at the beginning. So again, thinking about that graphic, the piston is actually going to be traveling in the cylinder and that cylinder bore and it is actually what is transmitting the force of the explosion that occurs in the combustion chamber of that air fuel mix um, to um, the crankshaft to actually power um, whatever it is that we're, we're working with maybe a lawnmower or a generator or whatever. Um, again the piston rings are attached to the piston to form a seal to keep the engine oil from getting up into the combustion chamber. All right, so our next graphic shows the entire piston. And um, you can see here a little bit better image of the piston rings, and I'll, and I'll show you these um, rings in another video from one of our actual engines in the shop. Um, you have the, the, the rings here going around the piston itself, the, the piston, which is, is this main component. 
the connecting rod that connects the, the piston to the crankshaft in this case, and then the rod cap. This is going to um, securely hold the connecting rod and then therefore the piston um, to the crankshaft. So after we just looked at, at that visual, we can see um, a little bit more detailed information um, about these components of the, of the piston. Um, again, that connecting rod is where we're gonna attach the piston to the, the crankshaft, and that's where we're actually gonna be converting um, the energy of that piston moving up and down that cylinder bore into the rot rotary movement um, of the crankshaft. Now we're gonna start talking about torque. So we have, we think about this, we, we, we do work with an engine, um, but we have to utilize physics to convert energy of a piston moving up and down into rotation movement um, to do something as simple as just use a walk behind lawnmower to mower grass. Um, and then again, it you know attaches um, at the small end to the piston, the large end is a connecting rod and the rod cap again attaches to the crankshaft. So I've said crankshaft a few times. So let's talk about the crankshaft itself. So this is it. This whole um, piece of, of metal is, is the crankshaft. And this is, is, you almost think of maybe like the backbone of the engine. This is where, with, where pretty much um, all of the, the work is going to happen. So this is the crank pin. This is where the connecting rod is going to connect the piston. So the piston is actually going to be, uh, will be oriented this way. Um, in this instant. And so as that piston moves up and down, it's going to be um, shoving this crankshaft in a circular motion um, due to the offset design of this crankshaft. And so what this piece is, if you're looking at an engine, um, especially like the ones we have in our shop, you're going to see this piece this part of the crankshaft sticking out the back of these horizontal shaft motors. So in um, the real world, this is where the application would attach. So I think I've said in, in our class, um, the engines we have most likely would have been used to power something like maybe a, um, a portable generator. So this end of the crankshaft or the, the PTO end would be attached to the application. So a generator, a, a pressure washer, or what have you. If it was a vertical shaft, then maybe like a walk behind lawnmower. Um, this end of the crankshaft is actually going to be in the flywheel. Um, so the flywheel is going to help keep this turning um, throughout the process of, of the, the four cycles of the engine, which we'll talk about a little bit. So between the flywheel and these counterweights to help keep everything spinning, um, even when the engine isn't producing power during the four strokes, which that'll make more sense here in a little while. So as we discussed, the, the crankshaft is what actually is going to convert the movement of the, of the piston to uh, rotational force, and we're going to call torque. We'll get more into torque, power, and work um, in another module. The counterweights, again, are going to um, balance that, that movement of the piston, help keep it turning, and then that crank pin is where the rod's actually going to attach. So now we'll look at some of the same components um, in a little bit of a different angle. So here is the, the, the entire crankcase, um, which is something you may actually now recognize being more of, a, of an engine. Um, this just simply doesn't have the crankcase cover on it, so we can kind of see what's going on. So the, the crankcase, this is where our engine oil is actually going to be, be sitting. So when we put oil in or um, we're checking oil, this is where we're checking the level of oil in our crankcase. Um, we'll get into lubrication. Basically, there's another piece we can't see right here behind this camshaft that's going to be slinging oil around, just keeping everything lubricated. So here's our crankshaft we've been talking about. Here's the cylinder. This is where the, the piston is actually going to be. And you can, in this, uh, you can't quite see the cab, but we see the counterweight. So the piston that would be attached down here. And we'll get into what the camshaft does in just a bit. So now we'll look at our valves, and in, before we get there, we're going to talk about the configuration of, of this drawing of this engine. So this is what I re referenced earlier as a flathead or an L-head engine. Remember when we talked about overhead valves in our first um, diagram, the valves were situated over the, the cylinder, and in the flathead situation, you can see this is called that because the head is actually, it's flattened, and the valves are actually beside uh, the, the piston. Um, the, the principles of operation are exactly the same. There's some 
Uh, they say there's some added benefits of horsepower and efficiency in an overhead valve situation. Um, but the, the basic way these things are going to run um, are going to be the same. Either way, you're going to have a, um, an intake and an exhaust valve. And these valves are going to control um, the, the intake side, is going to control the intake of, of air and fuel into the combustion chamber. And the exhaust valve is going to let exhaust gases escape as the um, engine is running. Um, I mentioned the camshaft a second ago. You can see where it's labeled camshaft load here. The whole camshaft is this big gear, the little piece to the left, and those loads. And this is going to help keep the engine in time, meaning the intake valve is going to open at the correct moment in time and the exhaust valve is going to open at the correct moment in time so the engine can actually operate. So the camshaft gears right here are connected directly to the gears that's going to be on our crankshaft. Here's the back end of our crankshaft that's going to um, keep everything running the way it, it, it needs to. And we'll talk about our valve tappets. These are going to ride on the, the camshaft lobes and you can see they're kind of shaped um, a little bit like this. Oh, I can't really draw very well with the mouse, but we're gonna have a rounded end and a little bit of a, of a pointed end. Um, and as that um, turns, um, this is what's got to be kept in time right here. So you can see when it gets into the, the top of the, almost looks like an avocado, um, it's going to push this valve up and, and take, um, that's the intake valve. You can see the air is kind of coming in. And then the exhaust valve is then closed. So now we'll move on to some of the, the, the big external um, parts or components of, of engines. We're gonna, we'll, we'll start by talking about the flywheel. The flywheel is, is simply um, um, its main, main job. Well, it's got two main jobs, I guess, but one of them is just simply being a big rotating mass, and it's going to rotate and um, make sure the engine keeps spinning even when it's not producing power. So we're going to learn a, um, another module that our, our spark plug is only going to fire in the presence of um, the air fuel mix one time out of four. And so during the other three um, rotations of the of the crankshaft, it's got to keep going. So that's what the flywheel is going to do. Um, in most of our um, small gas engines, especially modern ones, they're going to have a, um, an armature, which is next, or a magneto. And it's going to actually produce the electric spark that goes to the spark plug. And that is done through magnets that are actually on the flywheel. So that's the other job of the flywheel. The armature, also known as the coil, is going to be the, the, the piece that creates that spark into the spark plug. Um, or if you're in an older engine situation, um, you might um, see um, a points and condenser, um, which is another way of producing spark. Um, those pretty well haven't been used commonly since the, the, the 1980s, but if you're in older um, engines and even bigger engines, I can remember growing up on the farm, we had a, a 1966 grain truck with points and condensers and um, great truck unless it was um, an, an overly humid morning and, and then the points and condensers didn't really want to work. Um, Briggs and Stratton makes a great um, retrofit kit. Um, if you have an, an older engine that you're having problems with the, with the breaker points, um, that you can convert to a solid state um, or armature style ignition, which is much more reliable and much, much less headache than the old breaker points um, can be. But um, either way, um, the, the, the points again are used to kind of break up the, the, the flow of electricity and only send electric to the spark plug um, when needed. So here's a visual of, of what I was just talking about. Here's the points and condensers. Um, and you see it's, it's, it's several parts and there's some moving parts. And, and when we have moving parts, especially something as, as important as our ignition system, um, we can tend to have some trouble there. This is basically what it calls the evolution of, of the armature to where we are. Pretty much they all look like this today. They function basically the same way. As this flywheel here turns, there's going to be magnets somewhere on here. We can pretend that the magnets are right there. As this magnet passes right here, um, it's going to basically excite a whole bunch of electrons and it's going to produce electricity. Maybe if you can remember something like in a, in a, in a grade school or, or middle school science class, you may have taken um, a battery and wrap copper wire around it and create your own little mini electromagnets. You can pick up a paper clip. That's the same concept here. We're going to use magnets um, to create just a, a little bit of electricity, which will be enough to ignite um, the air fuel mix in the combustion chamber.
So a few more um, kind of big external components that we'll talk about is, is the carburetor. We're going to spend a lot of time on the carburetor in, a, in another module, so we'll briefly just look at it um, really. But it's, it's briefly, its job is to um, uh, mix air and fuel together and get to the combustion chamber. Some sort of starter, typically um, in a small engine situation, we, we often think about the manual rope or recoil starter, but we can have electric um, starts, especially like a, a, a a riding lawnmower or zero turn. We still consider those small engines, even though they may be a V twin. Um, with a big engine like that may have an electric start. Um, I've seen electric starts on um, even small um, generators that are a little bit um, higher priced. And then all of them have some sort of shroud um, that's basically to keep your hands and feet and anything else away from the moving parts that are spinning very, very fast. Um, and it also is going to allow air to contact the engine for cooling. Um, and, and one thing that a lot of people, I guess, um, forget about, especially in a lawnmower or push mower situation, is every once in a while it's a good idea to take that shroud off and clean out the old grass clippings and mud dauber nest and everything else um, that could um, lead to an engine overheating. So quickly, here's, here's a couple of examples. Um, of what we just talked about, a carburetor and, and the shroud. I'll start at the bottom, actually. It might be um, just a little bit easier for us to talk about. Um, we got our, our pull rope, which is our recoil or rewind starter. There's some little bit differences in the way they look. This one appears it came off of an, an older um, vertical shaft engine, probably a, a, probably a push mower. This is the handle we, you would pull to get the engine started. Hopefully you're familiar with that. Um, back up top, we have a carburetor, which is this part right here only. Here we're going to have our, our air cleaner, which we'll get into um, later, and this is going to be our, our fuel tank. In this particular instance, this is what we call a tank-mounted carburetor. Um, that was really, really common um, on walk-behind mowers at one point, especially in with our flathead engines. Um, pretty much most of our, our little more modern, um, even walk-behind lawnmowers with the uh, uh, overhead valve configuration are going to have um, a carburetor that's kind of a standalone piece and not mounted to a tank um, but it's pretty easy to recognize a carburetor with with something like the primer bulb right here so this is actually where you would push this button right here um, or really it's not really a button as much as it's a little a half of a rubber ball that's going to push gasoline um, from the tank into the carburetor and it we call priming um, to get the, the mower running. 